This is the first presentation for the second session of Applied Inquiry in Higher Education. This week, we will discuss how to use theory and existing literature for our research. In the last week's presentation, we reviewed the process of conducting research and started the very first step, which is identifying a research topic, problem, purpose, and question. Now, we will move on to the second step of research process, which is reviewing the literature. Prior to strategizing for your literature review, I would like to give you a brief introduction to the role of theory in research. Let's start with the definition of theory. Theory is an explanation or explanatory system that discusses how a phenomenon operates and why the phenomenon operates as it does. So simply put, theory provides a framework as we explain things. Depending on the focus of a theory, we can classify theories into different types. Grand theory deals with the universal aspects of social processes or problems and is based on abstract ideas and concepts rather than on case-specific evidence. For example, conflict theory claims that society is in a state of perpetual conflict and competition for limited resources. So, as the description sounds, this theory explains that schools train those in the working classes to accept their position as a lower class member of society. So, if we apply this theory to explain why low-income minority students are not represented at four-year universities, the explanation will focus on the concept of social reproduction and the role of education in this process. So again, it focuses on very abstract ideas and concepts rather than particular case or specific evidence. Middle-range theories are theories derived from specific scientific findings and focuses on the interrelation of two or more concepts applied to a very specific social process or a problem. A good example will be Tinto's student departure theory. This theory is developed in the context of higher education, synthesizing multiple theories that address social and psychological factors at both individual and institutional levels. We can also classify theories based on the level that a theory explains. First, macro theory covers larger social systems such as state, country, or even the world. Meanwhile, when theories are used to study small groups or individuals, say a couple, family, or team, they are referred to as being micro-theories. Meso-theory refers to the middle range between the two. Let's assume that we will explain why minority students drop out from four-year colleges. The conflict theory, as we already kind of, you know, viewed, would find the reason from the social system in which education serves as a mechanism of reproducing the class. So this is a macro theory. On the other hand, the symbolic interaction theory explains that faculty has and indicates lower expectations for minority students. And this interaction would influence minority students' performance, perceptions, and attitudes. So this theory focuses on individual interactions and therefore serves a micro theory. As already I mentioned, Tinto's model of student departure explains dropout decision based on not only individual level factors, but also institutional level factors. So it is an example of a meso theory that kind of marinates the two levels. So as you already noticed from the examples, theory provides framework to understand the phenomena we study, often behaviors or decisions of individuals and organizations. Another importance of the theory comes from the fact that theory can guide the design of the research. Two concepts are related to this. One is construct and the other is variable. Construct is the concepts that we will employ to explain different components of the theories. Construct is abstraction of ideas, people, organizations, events, objects, and things that we are interested in. Once we identify the construct, 
we can decide variables to operationalize the constructs with measurable attributes. For example, let's say our research question is how does differential tuition impact students' retention and graduation? To come up with hypothetical explanation, we may employ Austin's input environment output model of college effects. The theory basically says that individuals' input as well as environment determines outcomes. Applying this theory to our research question, we can identify the construct. In our study, the input factors are students' background characteristics, and the environment that we are interested in is institutional or program tuition policies. And output we look at is academic achievement. Still, these constructs are abstract, right? Now, to operationalize these concepts, to collect data and analyze those data in our research, we have to come up with variables. Based on our constructs, we identified variables for its concepts. So students' characteristics can include race, ethnicity, socioeconomic status, and first-generation status of individual students. Institutional or program-level tuition policy can be operationalized as a, if the program has differential tuition, and B, how much the differential amount is. Finally, academic achievement in this study can be measured by retention and graduation. And As we discussed in previous week, quantitative research and qualitative research use theory very differently. First, in a quantitative research, theory is something that is tested. So based on theory, researchers will come up with hypotheses or propositions that describe how constructs are related. Let's apply this to our example study, the effect of differential tuition on students' choice of major, retention, and graduation. Remember this? The human capital theory explains that when price goes up, demand goes down. If we apply this simple theory to the study, we will hypothesize that tuition increase in certain programs or majors will lead to a decrease in enrollment or retention and graduation outcomes in those programs and majors. So the construct will be differential tuition, enrollment, and retention and graduation outcomes. We can operationalize those concepts with the variables including if program charges differential tuition and how much those additional tuition is. And we can measure if a student declares a major in the programs with differential tuition and retention, stop out, drop out, graduation, degree attainment, and time to degree as other variables. In qualitative research, there is something that is generated from the observation and interpretation of individual cases. So if we study the same problem from a qualitative perspective, we would pursue research questions that focuses on students' perception on the policy and their relevant experiences. Let's assume that we collected data by interviewing students who are in the programs that charge differential tuition. Then we will come up with some distinctive patterns from the data and based on the patterns, we will create a tentative hypothesis that an increase in sticker price functioned as a negative signal to students about the support and affordability, even though the extra financial burden has not increased. And those can be lead to lower enrollment in lucrative majors, increased anxiety to finish the degree on time, and pressure to work while they're in college. So here is another example from actual research studies that are published. So one of my research interests is college rankings, as you, you already noticed. I identified a research problem based on the concerns of higher education administrators and researchers that institutions strive to improve rankings 
which resulted in the move of resources to ranking-related factors that are not necessarily related to educational activities. Also, based on the literature review, I learned that there is not much empirical evidence exists on this argument. Therefore, I came up with a research question to guide my study. That is, how does U.S. news and world report rankings affect institutional expenditures at four-year institutions? So hopefully, as you noticed, the research question is quantitative rather than qualitative. So my approach will be more deductive rather than inductive. That means I will apply a theoretical framework to guide my research and test hypotheses that are generated based on the theory. So I applied institutional theory, which explains that organizations will comply with the powerful system that defines what legitimate organizations should look like in the field. Based on the theory, I hypothesize that universities will increase expenditure on the areas that rankings measure when the system of ranking is introduced. So the constructs are rankings and expenditures. Still somewhat abstract, right? And now the variables are if an institution is ranked or not, as well as per full-time equivalent student expenditure on different activities. So you see how the design aspect of the study has been formed by the theory that I employed. Meanwhile, Gardner 2010 investigates somewhat similar topic, the influence of rankings on higher education institutions from a qualitative approach. This study is based on observations at one research university, and researcher collected data from interviews with doctoral students and faculty in six di disciplines. The researcher then identified the patterns from the data. Rankings make faculty to focus on and dissatisfied with the lack of resources and student quality when they feel pressure to improve their ranking position. On the other hand, students feel that their departments care more about image and faculty quality rather than student supports and experiences. So the tentative hypothesis is that when institutions seek to improve rankings, the culture of the institutions change and faculty feel stress while students are not satisfied with their experiences. Again, this presentation was to give you a better idea about how theory provides framework as well as empirical guidance to a research study. Although you do not need to employ a theory for your research project in this course, understanding the role of theory in research will be helpful as you read and use others' research. If you want to know more about theory, read the chapter from Cresswell 2009 that is uploaded to the Blackboard Supplemental Resources folder. Okay then, let's move on to literature review.